going to start off with Phoenix, Arizona. Inez is calling. Or Inez, how are you? I'm pretty good. good. I got papers yesterday from Social Security, like 16 pages, so I got to fill that out today. Oh, good. Um, yeah, they said the 14th is when they mailed it out, and I have 10 days to get it in, and I got it yesterday. So that narrows down my days there. But my, my problem is, um, and I don't know if you heard, but I'm on disability uh, from the post office, the federal job. Um, they don't pay for disability, like even temporary disability. So I'm going to wait seven, eight months for that to go through and see if I've been approved for disability. Um, in the meantime, I, well, before I went on disability, I had bought a car. So that was just a year ago. I bought this car because I put 80 some miles on my car every day going back and forth to work. So I, you know, thought this, I need it. I, I need something dependable to get back and forth to work. So I bought it. Well, I didn't realize how they roll over your amount from your other car onto that one. And so my payment was like six fifty four. And then when I get my, I look at my receipt and all that, when I get home, and I was like, okay, now the car is like $37,000 payoff on it compared to most of brand new car like that is about 25000 So I said, man, this doesn't look good, you know, after I'm going through disability and thinking, how can I pay for this car, keep paying for it, when I don't have anything coming in yet except for a private disability I took out myself, which is only like $1,000 a month. So I'm basically just paying my utilities with the $1,000, you know, and, and then I also, when I found out that, the Kia Finance was going to take my car. They called me and threatened, and they said, um, we're going to come and take it. And I said, well, I just can't right now pay you anything. You know, so I did pay them $100. They accepted that. and um, But they keep calling me wanting the car. And I thought, I, I'm going to be without a car completely, and i got to get back and forth to my doctor's appointment. So I went and bought one on the side of the road, a used car. So I do have that, but... Um, they're saying they're going to take my car and then I have to pay the difference between the payoff and what they're going to put in auction and get for it. So a friend of mine's like, well, you're going to have to file bankruptcy to get rid of that. And I, I'm, I'm just trying to hold out because I don't want to file bankruptcy. I've been there before. In fact, during the, the housing problems, my husband's deceased now. We lost our home because they said, well, you have to file bankruptcy, which, you know, then they came back out and said no, but they said you have to or you're responsible for that difference. Okay. So well, let's stop. December well, will let's be stop. Eight years. Let's stop. Okay. Okay. If you're, receiving pri- if you're receiving disability income only, that cannot be confiscated by a lawsuit. The Social Security disability? Correct. And your okay. disability as well from the post office if you've got private a private disability payment that you're receiving. Neither one of okay. those can be garnished. Okay? So if they take the car and uh, they will come after you for the difference and you're not able to work out anything on the difference, there is no requirement for you to fire, file bankruptcy because they can't take your income. Okay. You're what we call judgment-proof because you're so broke that the, you don't have anything for them to get. They can't okay. get at your disability income, and you don't have anything else, I assume, right? Um, just my retirement, you know, from the post office. Yeah, but that's, that's so protected as well. Do you have any other protected. money or any other assets? Do you own a paid-for home? Do you have a, no. a big pile of money in a bank no. or in another no. investment? No. Okay. I went through basically everything, and then my, you know, with my husband passing away, I'm on my own, so I don't have yeah. a home. Um, the only other thing I have is this car that I, like I said, it's yeah. just to use or, you know, Yeah, but if it's, it's a beater. They don't want it. So yeah. um, let's pretend that they take the car because that's what's going to happen. You simply cannot pay a $600 car payment. Right. There's not any, there's not anything that's going to happen to keep this car from going away. So when you get off the phone, call them and tell them to come get it. Okay. Because they're, they're going to take it. Okay. okay. Um, they want it already. They're just trying to figure out where it is. And, um, then, then when they take it, yes, they're going to sell it at auction and yes, they're going to come to you for the difference. If they come to you asking for $16,000, they might as well ask you for 200,000, right? Right. Cause you don't have it. So yeah. then you're going to have to negotiate at some point in the future 
when you get some money built up, you could call them and say, I don't have 16000 but I got 4000 and I'd like to settle this. And you'll settle the debt later. You're not bankrupt, though. So you're getting bad advice on the, from your friend who doesn't know what they're talking about, right. which is not somebody you need to take financial advice from. You're not bankrupt. Bankruptcy is, is you know, dropping an atom bomb on, a, uh, on an ant at this point. Right. It's just not necessary. It's not needed. So um, that, that's, you know, I, I'm really sorry you're facing all this. It's hard times for you. But you're going to yeah. lose the car. You should have never bought the car from day one. You should have never left the lot without looking at those pieces of paper and handing them those keys back and going, "Uh, uh-uh, I'm not doing this." And you know, and you know that you know that was a really, really dumb move. A six hundred dollar car payment in your life, in no time, in no place in history, would that been anything but crazy? Right. And so you just you you, you're just a mistake you made. We all make mistakes. That was a mistake. No, no, no. There's no excuse. um, There's no no, excuse. No, there's no excuse. We don't think right when we go through a a dust and all that. So my mind wasn't there. Yeah, you're right. And you got screwed because of it. Yeah. So you got to go slow while you're facing this disability and slow when you're making these other decisions because you really can't afford two or three or more of these decisions like this. So I'll tell you what, hold on. I'm going to have Kelly pick up. I'm going to have one of our financial coaches that has been through our training help you as my gift to make sure that you make this this situation be minimized and make sure that they unpack with you your whole situation and that that what I'm telling you is right because I think I'm right if I've got all the picture I'm right but I'm a little bit afraid that there might be a little corner of this that I'm not seeing yet so I want someone to sit down with you and help you and I'm going to pay for it okay so you hold on and I'll have Kelly pick up we'll have one of our Dave Ramsey financial coaches meet with you there in Phoenix and look at this situation with you you're not bankrupt don't go file bankruptcy but I think you are going to lose this car so hold on I'll get you some help kiddo and uh, move slow and careful You do not have room to make more errors like this. Ouch. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button to get the latest content and check out these other great clips from the show. So you have to break the cycle. You have to flip this thing on its head and make it behave. You've got to get so fired up and wired up that your broke friends think you've lost your mind. 